Hey guys, Robbie here from CrossFit South Bend. Today we're going to talk about healthy fats. Now we've already done a video talking a little bit about the science behind monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats. Uh, and we're going to do a video in the future about kind of the science behind saturated fats and trans fats. But today we're going to do a little bit more of a practical video about what fats you can actually use to uh, not only cook with, but some solid fats that you can eat as well to have some healthy fats with your meal. So, as you can see, we've got some fats laid out here. Over here are kind of the animal fats slash uh, saturated fats. And over here are more the mono unsaturated fats. Now, it's important to remember that every single fat that we talk about here has some combination of saturated fat, mono unsaturated fat, and polyunsaturated fat. Even olive oil has some saturated fat. And believe it or not, lard, which most people associate with saturated fat, is actually uh, largely composed of monounsaturated fat, the same fat that olive oil is made of. So these are all kind of a, a mixture of different types of fats, but they're, they kind of do fall into certain, certain categories. So we're gonna talk about each, what their uses are, what they tend to be good for, and then, and then we'll go from there. So first we wanna talk about, let's talk about ghee. So some of you may have heard of ghee before, some of, may, some of you may have not. Ghee is used a lot in Indian cooking uh, it's really just clarified butter. It's also used a lot in French cooking. Uh, the reason it's used in French cooking is to get that butter flavor without the butter burning. So basically what ghee is, is it's butter, but with the milk proteins removed. So it's basically butter oil or butter fat. And uh, that can be good for high heat cooking. It can also be good because the healthiest part of dairy, as we've discussed before, is actually gonna be the dairy fat. When you take out the dairy proteins like whey and casein, and when you take out the dairy sugars uh, like lactose, you're left with a much, much uh, healthier fat. So that's what ghee is gonna be. So if you're sensitive to dairy, this might be something to try instead of butter. This tastes really great with uh, you know, uh, Brussels sprouts. It is really good as a substitute for butter for searing on the, uh, on the stove top. It's, it's really a, a fantastic uh, cooking oil. So that's ghee. And really, uh, one other thing to say before we move on from ghee is that I have a lot of people tell me, oh man, I buy ghee at the supermarket and it just eh, kind of tastes kind of weird. The type of ghee you buy matters. Pure Indian foods, I don't get any money from them, but it's a brand that I really like. To me, it tastes like movie theater butter. It's really delicious. And at the end of the day, you know, if you want to buy something that you like, try to get it from a good brand. Now, if you just want to make it at home, really all you do is you just take some butter, it could be Kerrygold, could be something else, put it over the stovetop, uh, warm it up gently until the milk solids uh, rise to the top, then skim them off and you can make ghee at home. Now, another really popular healthy fat that's becoming a lot more well-known these days is coconut oil. So for anyone who thinks saturated fat is bad for you, but thinks at the same time coconut oil is healthy for you, it's important to note that coconut oil has more saturated fat than any of these other things here. So there are a lot of people out there that are like, you know, coconut oil is healthy, but saturated fat is not. Well, coconut oil has more saturated fat than any of these other fats, and it actually is extraordinarily healthy for you. Like I said in a future video, we'll talk about the scientific underpinnings of that. But for now, you should just know that coconut oil is very healthy for you. You know, all these fats, as you can see, are kind of solid at room temperature, so you gotta scoop them out. Um, coconut oil is gonna be really great for sauteing uh, plantains. Uh, I like it a lot on green beans with, with sea salt. Uh, it's really got kind of a unique flavor. If you don't like coconut flavor, there's a way to get coconut oil but without, uh, without that coconutty flavor. If you go to tropicaltraditions.com, their green label coconut oil does not have that coconut, coconutty flavor to it. So this is a really fantastic cooking oil as well. Very, very stable at high heats. And that's one of the things that's unique about these types of fats right here on the side, is that they tend to be very, very stable when exposed to light, heat, and air, which are kind of the main cooking conditions that we, we deal with. Saturated fat is much more resistant to oxidation, which is when the fat breaks down and you know turns into kind of unhealthy compounds compared to uh, polyunsaturated fats. Now let's talk about some of these animal fats. So you've probably only heard of these in the context of like your grandparents and great grandparents using these: uh, tallow, lard, duck fat. Uh, beef tallow is actually what they use uh, used to use to uh, cook 
McDonald's french fries in. And, and uh, the founder of McDonald's actually went to his grave uh, feeling like when they switched to vegetable oil, it was, it was a downgrade in terms of both taste uh, and quality. So tallow is basically just pure beef fat. Uh, it's really good for high heat cooking. A word of note with this is that you got to be really, really careful when you uh, let it dry on the stovetop. You got to make sure that you uh, you clean it off pretty quickly, otherwise it gets really sticky. But this is fantastic for roasting potatoes, for sautéing vegetables, cooking meat, so on and so forth. Lard, right? Supposedly the uh, source of all our health ills and uh, obesity, even though our lard consumption has dramatically, dramatically dropped from 100 years ago. Uh, very few people consume lard today. It's actually lots of trans fat oils that we consume today that are leading to our health issues. Lard, if you get it from a good source uh, and you're using it in the right context, is actually delicious and it can be quite healthy for you. So there are two types. Uh, there's pure lard and then there's leaf lard. Leaf lard is just fat from around the kidneys. It's used a lot in French cooking, it's got a kind of unique flavor, and pure lard is just back fat. Really, either one's gonna be fine. You can render this yourself at home, but if you don't wanna make it, you can get it from this company called Fatworks uh, that makes really, really good quality uh, lard from pasture-raised animals and from a very good source. Duck fat. So you may be, uh, you may have heard about this recently, either in kind of a health context or a cooking context. It's uh, getting a little bit of a resurgence. This is what they usually, this is what they originally used in France uh, to make french fries with. Way before Ray Kroc was using tallow for uh, his fries, they were using duck fat for their fries. And duck fat has this really, really unique flavor to it. It's really delicious to make potatoes with, uh, saute vegetables with, and it's gonna be another really good fat for high heat cooking. And then lastly, something that you all recognize and have probably cooked with many times before, which is butter. Uh, again, this has kind of been demonized over the past 30 to 40 years, and our consumption of it has dropped dramatically, even though our obesity rates and diabetes and all the rest of that stuff has gone up precipitously. So uh, butter is probably not the cause of what's, what's going on here. I would rather any day of the week someone have butter over the trans fat laden Franken food, which is margarine. So if you get butter from a good source, uh, like Kerrygold or lots of others, um, you know, grass fed, full fat, all the rest of it, this is going to be a, a, a healthy cooking fat, and assuming you're not sensitive to dairy, things like casein and whey, uh, which, by the way, are just present in very minute amounts in butter, but assuming you're not sensitive to those things, this is going to be a good option for you. So those are kind of the more saturated fats. Again, you know, they're all kind of a mix. You know, tallow is more saturated than lard is. Lard is primarily monounsaturated, and then duck fat kind of gets into more monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. So that's uh, kind of the fats that tend to be very stable when you're cooking. Now let's come over here and let's talk about kind of the monounsaturated fats. So the king of all the monounsaturated fats, olive oil, right? It's been used for years and years and years in Greek cooking, Italian cooking, doesn't matter whether you're vegan, vegetarian, doesn't matter who you are, Dr. Oz, everyone agrees that this stuff is healthy, and it is. Uh, it's fantastic for you, just make sure that you're getting the stuff from a very good source. There have been lots and lots of articles actually about how uh, because of the Italian mafia trying to cut costs, they actually uh, import a lot of olive oil with uh, you know canola oil and cottonseed oil as kind of fillers to cut down on costs. You really want to make sure that you're getting pure olive oil. Um, now if you get pure olive oil, you know Costco would be a good brand here that, that is definitely pure. Uh, there's a lot of controversy out there about can you cook with olive oil? The answer is yes. The concern is since olive oil is not a saturated fat, you know, is it as stable at, you know, uh, high heat with exposure to light and air? Uh, and the answer is even though it's a monounsaturated fat, which is less stable when exposed to light, heat and air, it's got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of antioxidants that protect it from breaking down when exposed to high heat. So I really wouldn't worry too much about cooking with olive oil. Uh, I think it's really fantastic for cooking. Now, if you don't like olive oil, uh, you know, I, I like olive oil for cooking, but I don't really like the straight taste of it on my salads. So what I've done is, you know, this is a, a brand called Lucero. They have lemon olive oil. You know, that's just something that I happen to like if I'm just gonna, instead of, you know, cooking with it, if I'm gonna have it on salads. 
uh, you know, find the stuff that you like. Find the stuff that you enjoy that tastes good to you. If you don't like, you know, straight olive oil on your salads, go for lemon olive oil. Same thing with avocado oil. I like this for cooking, but I don't like it necessarily straight, so I'll buy some lemon avocado oil to have on my salads. Avocado oil is another really, really uh, healthy fat that you can use. It's actually really, really good for high heat uh, cooking. It, it has a decently high smoke point, so that's another one that you can use uh, in that context. You can also use it for cold uses as well. Another one that you can use that's got really kind of a unique flavor, uh, it's an acquired taste, you gotta kind of see if it's something you like, is macadamia nut oil. This would be another fantastic way to have monounsaturated fats with your uh, meal, kind of as a, you know, a dressing on salad or uh, sort of a, a condiment. Now what do you do if you, you know, don't really have the opportunity to use oils or you're at work and you don't have these uh, accessible, what do you do in terms of solid fats that you could just kind of bring with you and eat? So macadamia nuts, of course, uh, these are fantastic, super healthy fat. Just make sure you're not eating the entire canister, you know, uh, maybe a handful or two at a time, uh, you know, per meal, something like that. Uh, on the avocado side, you could get, you know, just a straight up avocado, cut it open, take the pit out, put some sea salt on it, it's really delicious. Another option is uh, guacamole. These are some pods that they sell at, um, at Whole Foods that I really like, uh, that are kind of individually wrapped. And then on the olive side, you can just get straight olives if, if that's what you like. So uh, instead of olive oil, you can get straight olives. And those are all examples of solid cooking fats that you can have with you. Another example would be uh, coconut flakes. So for coconut oil, you know, if you can't use that at work or something like that, you can buy some coconut flakes and those would be uh, some healthy fats that are solid that you can kind of take with you to work. All right guys, so hopefully now you've got a sense of the different types of fats that are out there. There are others besides these, but these are just some uh, good examples for you to help you navigate this area and find out which cooking fats uh, are, are healthy for you and, and some new ones that you might try and you might like and might, might have a new taste that you haven't experienced before. All right guys, so this is Robbie here from CrossFit South Bend signing off and we'll see you guys next time.